Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Parenting Caregiver Corner, where I will be touching upon hot topics and or answering your burning questions. So please don't forget to send us your questions. It is August 25th today, so many of you will be sending children to school for either the first time ever or the first time in a long time due to school closures. And it's going to be tough for some of them. Some children will be very excited to meet new friends and reunite with old ones. But some are going to struggle with leaving home, and some will struggle with the change in routines. So today we are going to talk about the latter, struggling with change. So there is a lot of change in a child's life. You know, it might be daily, monthly, or yearly. Kids have to transition from a soother to no soother, or from wearing a diaper to no diaper, or from crib to bed, or from life at home with their parents to a full day of kindergarten. Kids also have to transition their minds all day long and bodies um, from a state of play to rest and from uh, to and from states, states of hunger. So to support my chat today in talking about change, I'm going to use a few resources that are attached in the description, one of which is by childmind.org, which is um, a website that in part empowers parents, and then Psychology Today, which is the world's largest portal to psychotherapy and includes free access to thousands of professionals. So check those out if you're interested. So what are some signs that your child is having trouble with transitions or this idea of change? We have five points here. Number one, resistance. You know, maybe they plead for five more minutes, just five more minutes. Uh, two, avoidance. They might even just completely ignore your call for nap time or lunch time. Number three, distraction. They might find five toys on their way to their room for nap time. Number four, negotiation. You know, might sound like, I promise I'll take my nap if we just read one more story. And number five, full-blown meltdown. Well, I'm sure you know what this looks like. So some of these reactions are a result of being unable to control emotions and they'll need your help in co-regulating. But sometimes it's a learned behavior. So if you've read one, uh, one more book every single time your child has asked, then they are likely to do that again because they learn that negotiation will delay nap time. But some of these reactions might simply be because of a change in expectation. So change is going to be hard for kids. So when we think about sending them to school in a couple of weeks, we have to remind ourselves that our kids are shifting from one familiarity to an entirely new way of life. So the two major reasons that kids struggle with change are, number one, their temperament. So I've mentioned this before, all kids have different temperaments, right? Our temperament determines the way we experience the world around us. It is sort of like our personality and it continues with us throughout life. So your children's temperament might be the reason that they are more easily distracted or that they struggle to adapt to new experiences. Number two is development. So without the ability to self-regulate or understand how to prepare for the future, kids really live in the present moment. So it can be unnerving when something changes and the child doesn't know what to expect next. And then number three, context. So sometimes it has everything to do with how the child is feeling that day. So change will be all that much harder when the child hasn't slept good or when they are in a new environment. So how can parents or caregivers help? The first thing they can do is create routines. So imagine how difficult it would be for a child to enter a kindergarten classroom without ever having been exposed to some sort of structure or routine. It's going to be hard. Start preparing your child right now by creating routine and offering them consistency and structure. So creating a routine can include setting a specific time for rest, for play, for learning, and for eating. So perhaps starting a ritual together, you know, every day after you have breakfast, you always do a two-minute mindfulness practice. You can even practice getting your kids ready for school before school begins to help them get into that routine. Demonstrate to them 
early what school mornings are going to look like because they will they will likely be a little more rushed than their usual mornings with you. Number two, preview and count down. So allow them to preview the day or week. What might a school day look like? What might it look like when they get home from school? Then offer a countdown in the mornings. You know, in 20 minutes we're going to do this, then 10 minutes, then 5, it will be time to finish breakfast and head to school. Next is to give it a soundtrack. So adding a song to a transitional period can make the experience more exciting. Wouldn't you rather tidy up with the cleanup song than with no song at all? <laughs> the next is to use visual cues. So try using a visual schedule that the child can check things off of. Maybe even implement rewards by using stickers to check off each transition. So kindergarten teams co-create and talk about schedules with children when they get to school. So they make sure everyone can see and remember what their day together is going to look like. So there can't be any harm in starting this, pra this practice off at home. Um, and then it will obviously help them be prepared for when they get into the classroom. The next is to get their attention. So ensure that the child is focusing on your instructions and that they understand them. Try making eye contact with the child or putting your hand on their shoulder or asking them to repeat what you've said. The next is to implement appropriate consequences. Remember, children learn and pick up on the responses they receive from different behaviors. So try not to escalate an issue by arguing or negotiating with the child who is struggling to transition. Give the child time to transition and offer appropriate consequences only when a child's behavior is off limits. When helping your child's transition, an off-limit behavior might be, you know, your child hitting you in frustration. An inappropriate consequence to this would be matching that behavior with an unregulated self, for example, by yelling at the child. So the goal of discipline is to guide and teach, not really to punish. So an appropriate consequence might be to first give the child space and ensure that they don't hurt themselves or anyone else, and then connect with them. You know, I see that you're upset, but we do not use our hands when we feel angry. And then you can redirect. Next time, let's try using our words. I've attached a link by caringforkids.cps and it gives some more information regarding positive discipline. The next thing we can try is to praise good transitioning. So be sure that the praise is specific. You know, wow, thank you so much for brushing your teeth right when I asked. Now we can get dressed even sooner. And the last one here is to co-regulate. So when some transitions are harder than others, remember the reasons I mentioned earlier and have empathy. Change is hard. Sometimes you'll need to support your child in regulating their anger when you tell them it's time to get ready for bed. You can co-regulate by modeling your own self-regulation when you are faced with challenges. You can even practice self-regulating tools together to support your child when the issue eventually arises. So for example, together you can practice five finger breathing, right? So you can trace your hand slowly as you breathe in and breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. And you continue that on your whole hand. It's a little tool that kids can use to help them in those moments of distress. So that's all for today. I hope this um, helps you transition to the next part of your day. To find out more about kids dealing with change, leave a comment below with your questions and I will address them in future weeks. Bye for now.